we can use what we've learned about the derivative of inverse functions uh, to prove a little bit more of the power rule. So remember, originally we proved the power rule only for positive uh, integer powers. And then, uh, thinking about quotients, we proved it for negative integer powers. Um, but now we're in a position to prove the power rule for fractional powers. So let's find the derivative of uh, the nth root of x. So remember, the nth root of x, that's really uh, x to the 1 over n. Okay. Well, the reason that we're in a position to, fu to find the derivative of this is because it's the inverse of the function x to the n, at least for certain x values it is. So let's name this x to the n function f of x. And then the inverse function is just x to the 1 over n. And we have a nice formula for the derivative of an inverse function. The derivative of an inverse function is 1 over the derivative of the original function, but evaluated at f inverse of x. So I guess I need an x right here. All right, well, to use this formula, we're going to need to know f prime, but we can calculate that. Right? F, f of x is just x to the n. And remember, n is a positive integer, so we can calculate uh, we can calculate the derivative of x to the n using the power rule because we've proved the power rule for positive integers. So f prime of x is n times x to the n minus 1. OK, so in this denominator here, we need f prime, but we need to, if, we need to plug in f inverse of x. So f prime is right here. It's n times its input to the n minus 1. But we have to plug in f inverse of x. So we have to plug in x to the 1 over n. All right, so now let's simplify this. Uh, let's see, 1 over n. Let's see, so a power and then parentheses to another power. Uh, you multiply these. So this is x to the n minus 1 over n. So 1 over n times x to the, let's see, n over n is 1, and then 1 over n is 1 over n. And then we can get this x part into the numerator just by changing the sign on its exponent, right? So we get 1 over n times x to the 1 over n minus 1. But what we, remember, what, what we are doing here is calculating the derivative of f inverse. So this is the derivative of uh, x to the 1 over n right cuz that's what f inverse is and this is what the power rule said it, it should be right the power came down and the new exponent is one less than it used to be so this proves the uh, power rule for fractional exponents well at least for fractional exponents where the numerator is 1 the denominator can be any uh, the denominator can be any positive integer all right well if we've proved it for fractional exponents where the numerator is 1, maybe we should think about fractional exponents where the numerator isn't 1. Uh, so let's find the derivative of x uh, to the mn, where m is any integer and n is a, a positive integer. So all fractions are of this form. So if we can find, if we can prove that the power rule works for, uh, works for this situation, then we've proved the power rule for all rational exponents. Okay, so let's see what we can do. Uh, x to the m over n. Now, remember, we've proved the power rule for integer exponents, positive and negative, and we've proved the power rule for fractional exponents where the numerator is 1. But we can split this exponent up into those cases exactly. We can write it like x to the 1 over n to the n. And now we have a chain rule situation on our hands, right? We have a power function with the power m. And inside of that, we have a power function with the power 1 over n. So we have to do the chain rule. So take the derivative of the outside piece, right? The m comes down and changes to m minus 1. Uh, and then we put the inside piece into this, so x to the 1 over n. And now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside piece. But now we're differentiating. Uh, a power function 
where the fractional exponent has a 1 in the numerator. And that's what we proved before. right? So now we know that the derivative of this inside piece is 1 over n times x to the 1 over n minus 1. Now we have some simplifying to do. So let's gather up the constant multiples. So we get m over n, which is good, because that's what we expected. right? This m over n came down in front as a multiple. Uh, and then we have, let's see, this piece here gives us x to the m minus 1 over n times x to the 1 over n minus 1. All right, so this is m over n times x to the, let's see, maybe we can split these up. This is m over n minus 1. So that's coming from this piece. But when you multiply two things with the same base, you add their exponents. So let's add this one, 1 over n minus 1. Oh, I made a mistake here. So this, this should be m over n minus 1 over n. There we go. But now when we add these exponents, the 1 over n's cancel. And we get m over n times x to the m over n minus 1. And that's the power rule. So again, the power rule, the same formula works, even though we had to work a lot harder to prove that the formula is correct for rational exponents.